Do you have any pain or uh, swelling or areas of uh, discomfort? Uh, no, I don't. And I'm basically inspecting uh, the forearms, looking for any uh, muscle uh, asymmetry, um, uh, any obvious swellings, and there doesn't appear to be. Um, looking at the, uh, uh, the fossae on the back of the hand, looking at the extensor tendons and the joints to see if there's any swelling. Looking at the colour of the, of the hands um, in terms of circulation, and also at this point looking at the nails to see if there's any nail changes, onchiolysis, um, or any pitting in the nails. There's, um, there's no obvious uh, swan neck deformity or boutonne deformity in, in the fingers, um, and uh, there's no obvious signs of an in infection. Uh, the normal skin creases um, all the way through, no swelling, no um, wasting of the thena eminence or the hypothena eminence. And I'm just checking uh, to see if there's any scars on either side around the uh, medial epicondyle, and there's a traumatic scar on the forearm, and there's also another traumatic scar there. I'm going to feel for temperature in the palm both sides and feel in the forearm. I'm starting to feel for synovitis in the wrist joint and obviously feel the EPL tendon and moving around to the ulna head. Is there any pain at all when I press this? Coming down yeah. to the hand, I'm just going to squeeze the metacarpal foundry joint, see if there's any discomfort. We know he's hypermobile, um, so there's a bit of clunking going along as I'm going along. And then the interphalangeal joints and the PIP joints, no, no pain at all when I do that. And then the thumb itself, the basal thumb, TP joint, and that feels okay. Um, I'm going to do the same on the other hand, uh, feel across the wrist joint, synovitis, uh, and then move. I'm now going to uh, assess for sensation, and effectively I'm going to just check that the sensation is the same on both sides. Does that feel the same? Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's the median nerve, I assess the ulnar nerve, mm -hmm. that feels normal. Okay, and then if I just do to the other side here, does that feel the same on both sides? Yes. I'm just going to check with the uh, muscle bulk, just for palpation. So this is the thena muscle bulk and this is the hyperthena muscle and it seems like normal on both sides. And we just check the muscle bulk for the first dorsal intraosseous muscle on both sides. And every other way you can see the normal muscle bulk for the uh, adductor digiti minimi. That's also seen in the, from the palmar aspect looking at the hyperthena eminence. So if you can hold your hands up like that for me, mm -hmm. and I want you to bring your wrists up. That's good. And then can you do that? And there seems to be symmetrical movement uh, in that plane. And then if you go from radial deviation and on the deviation, that's fine. And then hold your fingers out straight. So I'm testing finger extension. And if you can curl your fingers up to make a tight fist, okay, and then let them go. Put your hands out straight and then bring your thumbs. And we're testing uh, abduction of the thumb. And the last thing to do is if you could just put your thumb and your tip finger together and that's the OK sign, which is like measure the anterior trussus nerve is intact. The tenodesis test, if we put the wrist into extension, you can see the fingers passively move into flexion. The thumb flexes at the IP joint there. When you put it into extension, then the fingers uh, extend with the normal cascade. I'll do that once again. And the fingernails point towards the scaphoid tubercle, which is a normal position of the fingers with the fingers um, passively flexed and then coming into a extension, the fingers passively move with the normal pattern. So this is a normal tenodesis test. And now I'm gonna assess your, in, your tendons individually. First of all, I'm gonna assess your, the um, FPL to the thumb. So if you could just hook your thumb for me like that and stop me doing that and do that for me and do that. So the FPL is intact both sides. And you do the FDS to the index, if you could curl your finger up for me as much as you can. And the same with this one, and the same with the ring finger, and the same with the little finger. So FDS is intact, <coughs> and do the same on this side. I'm going to do the FDP to the index finger, so pull up nice and hard with that, okay. There's good power on that, good power for the FDP, everything seems to be good. And the same with the, uh, uh, the index finger on this side. If you could pick up that uh, penny for me, thank you. And then if you could do that, that's fine. If you could give it back to me, I'd like you to, to hold the key, and the same with the other. So this is less testing, um, effectively key pinch. This is tripod pinch, um, which is the same. And if you do the same with the other hand, your grip uh, position, which seems to be normal. And if you could pass it to the other side. Okay, um, we're just going to examine the individual peripheral nerves uh, using uh, RUM, which is radial, ulnar, and median nerve. We're going to do the motor first and then the sensory. 
Um, so the radial nerve uh, motor, I want you to do the pistol position like that, so hold your fingers out like that. You're going to test your thumb extension on both sides, that's normal. And then turn your hands flat so we can test them this against gravity, extensor to the NCP joint, it's gravity, and your wrist extensors against gravity, so that's normal. Now nice and wide, I'm going to test the first dorsal muscle, which is here, and you palpate the muscle whilst you're doing it. And again, this side, and on this side, so that's all normal. Um, and then we're going to do the Froman's test. So if we could do that, as we can, so put, the, put it into, right into the waist face of the thumb with a clenched fist, and then you basically keep the thumbs flat and try and pull apart to see. So you have lots of tension in there, and the thumb's staying flat, which means that the adductor pollicis is, is working. So if you could just demonstrate, if you had a positive Froman's sign, what would happen now? And you see that the thumb goes into flexion and because the FPL is recruited because the adductor pollicis is in. So that would be a positive Froman's sign on the left. So if you bring your thumb up into abduction, so palm abduction, and we're just going to test the muscle against resistance again, always put it into the position and then test it against resistance. And then we're going to test the anterior trosseus muscle uh, nerve uh, specific components. So this is the OK sign, so I'll put it into that. And I'm going to see if I can break the ring. And you can see that. And on this side, and this is testing the power of the uh, FPL and the FTP to the index finger. I'm going to just press gently on it. Is that uncomfortable? Are you okay with that? That's so okay. I'm just going to basically press on your uh, median nerve and just let me know whether you feel anything happening in your fingers at all. No. Now we're going to just ask you to put your hands like this and just drop your wrists into that sort of position. Is that comfortable for you? Yes, that's comfortable. And <clears throat> let me know whether you feel any pins and needles or pain coming into your fingers at all. And then finally, the Tenel's uh, uh, test, which is I'm going to just palpate, I'm going to percuss your nerves. So start distally and then move towards the uh, proximal side, just tapping the nerve, and there's no pins and needles going down the fit. No, into there isn't. At all. I'm just going to do the same for that. I'm going to feel your pulse, which is normal on that side, and then normal on the left side as well. And obviously, you can feel for an ulnar pulse as well if we've really got uh, time in the examination. Uh, lastly, I'm going to check for capillary refill. So it's going to uh, basically touch the finger, and then there's a brisk capillary refill, which is less than two seconds, which is normal. I'm just going to compress both the radial and the ulnar artery there and I let the, hand, the fingers come out straight and I'm going to let the ulnar artery off and see, you can see the, the palm are sort of flush coming in from the ulnar side, that's fine, so that's good flow from the ulnar side and then make a fist again. Okay, and now I'm going to press that again from this side, I'm going to keep the ulnar side compressed, now relax your fingers and then I'm going to just do that and we'll see how much filling comes from the radial side. You can curl up the finger like this and basically, so curl your index finger up and you can compress the, the radial and ulnar digital arteries and do the same with that. Um, so if you now let your finger go, and you can do that. And so there's pretty good flow from the ulnar side, and then do it again. And, do it again. and let the finger out straight, and there we go. And as we just demonstrate, um, your thumb to your forearm, so if you can just put your thumb to the forearm, okay. And the same on the other side. Just about like that, and then also the little finger hyperextension, 90 degrees, and then I'm just going to come back so that can you see the hyperextension? So that gives you six out of extension in your knees. And lastly, lastly, if you just put your hands down to touch your toes, and if you're really going for gold, is to go to the floor.